lower rates. Yo, yo, what up, y'all? This is J. Cole, Cole World. You're hot. The rock is in the building, and you are now rocking out with Sports Rap Live, right here on Sports Talk, 790 AM, and our heart radio. Shout out to J. Cole. He looks like Diamond Life. You know, I saw him rocking the uh, Valentine's shirt when we were in Orlando for All-Star Weekend. That's right. That was when that drop happened, man. It was dope. Saw a lot of good friends out there, man. Everywhere we go, we've got Rat Pack everywhere. Wow. Rat Pack Worldwide. Shout out to Chum Lee. Early shout out to Chum Lee, who rolled up on the block yesterday in a murdered out brand new Phantom. You guys go to the Facebook page at Sports Rap, Rap with two Ps. You guys will see that picture posted up there, right? Uh, it was it was crazy. He shut the block down. You got that pic up there? I do. Oh, I do. Wow. Well, I don't know if I put it on. You can go to either one. I'm going to put rap. it up there. There you go. There you go. It is on the, the Sports Rap Facebook. So, uh, hey, guys, we've got to get into the rap sheet. We've got this game about to start. Game four in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the rap sheet, of course, is brought to you by Gary Trichter. Shout it out over there at Junction Rap Pack. We're going to have to get the L.A. Rap Pack to start shouting out to Gary Trichter. Because I'm sure he would travel to yeah, help a friend the, out. We saw the Gary Trichter of... Uh, <laughs> Where is that? Of uh, New York. Well, he's not really the Gary Trichter of New York. He's New York's top divorce lawyer, oh, and wow. he rolled up in a metallic silver Lamborghini. Tito, did you see any of the pictures of that? Oh yeah, I actually saw that Lamborghini getting wrapped. Chrome over here. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. It is shout out Sunday. Hey, jump on with us real quick, Lonnie. Say hi to everybody in H Town. We got Lonnie Lee. We just want. No, are you out? Hey, you're you out. Get, say hi. Just Lonnie. say shout out H Town. Come on, Come on, Lonnie. Wow. Don't be shy, babe. Come womp, this, womp. No, it's okay. Just shout out H-Town. All right, shout out H-Town, but I'm really terrible at that. No, you're not. That's fine. You're That's natural. fine. You're natural. Well, tell us, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do for two in the shirt. You don't want to do that? No. If you put, That's hey, okay. If you put a, this is the lovely Miss Lonnie Lee, a photographer for Two in the Shirt, a brand that we've done several t-shirts with for the H-Town Sneaker Summit now, and we saw her in action yesterday shooting the beautiful Brittany Weaver at a top secret location here in Los Angeles. That's right. So That's thank right. you for stopping by. We appreciated the opportunity to see you in action. Fun fact, hey Tito, so we got our man Tito the DJ, he's in H-Town right now holding it down with the rap pack. He is, he goes hard for Two in the Shirt. I'm rocking you it right now. That he's rocking it right now, as he just said. Uh, did you know that Miss Lonnie Lee was on one of the very first two in the shirts? I believe so. I think it was like second, like second year they were out or something like that. The second year they were out. Is that right, Lonnie? The what? He said your shirt came out the second year of the brand. Yes, Tito knows. Ding, 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 ding. The Make It Rain I'm team. I'm telling you. So. Yep, the Make It Rain. That's right. That was the one. That was a self shot? Wow, self shot T. There you go. A little ex Sports Rap Live exclusive. Right here. Well, thank you for stopping by. And what's that? The money was actual winnings from Vegas. Wow, so she actually won money in Vegas, went upstairs and shot the T. And made it rain. What hotel was that in? The Venetian. Oh, that's what's up. Shout out Venetian on the strip <laughs> there in Vegas. Hey, thank you thanks very for much. stopping by. It was a pleasure to see you in action this weekend. And we hope to see more of her work soon in the future from Two in the Shirt. That's twointheshirt.com or Two in the Shirt on Twitter. So make sure you check that out. Talented, very talented photographer. Very much so. So I think a lot of people would love to have her job. Including our man, Tito the DJ. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Can I put my application in? Where would I, where do I send it? Absolutely. Hey, Merrick was taking uh, Merrick was taking applications yesterday. He had some of the kids from Zoomies out on a trip for the weekend. And Merrick takes these kids to L.A. to see what it's all about and sets up photo shoots. Yeah, while, we, while we're speaking of it, I'll go ahead and post up a picture of uh, Lonnie. Yo. All right. Keeping it going, that is to the shirt.com. We can check that out. Also, Sports Wrap page. And on Sports Talk 790, we'll get that picture up there. So, Andrew, what, you know, what I want to talk about is we were talking about Gary Trichter earlier. Did you see Justin Blackman this weekend? No, I missed no, out. I, I think he got riding around and getting it. He was riding around getting it with a .24. That's .24? A, that, yeah, that's what they, they officially got him as, a .24 on a DUI. That's ridiculous. <laughs> hey, that's not... That's not Here's how you know that that's your BAC is high. Bottles. If you put a four in front of it, and that should probably be close to his like forty time. I mean, that, that's <laughs> <laughs> like if you blow something to where that's close to like your forty time, that's probably not a good look. No, not a good look at all. No, not at all. Not a good and that's look. his second one too. 
So he's going to no go for way. three? I call. Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can't go for the three, Pete. <laughs> especially not in the state of Florida. Uh, I think he was actually in uh, Oklahoma when he got it. Was it Oklahoma? I think it was. I have to figure out what state it was in when he got it. But that's definitely not a good look for a guy that's a first-round pick. So he definitely needed some Gary Trigger in his life. Yeah, definitely. Got to get that cowboy lawyer up on there. Seems that they're dropping in and out from L.A., so we're going to keep it wrapped up. Oh, there he is. There we yep. go. There, hey, we're Hi, right here. Hey, guys. Right here. You know there's a power outage in, in Los Angeles during the summertime, so if we just get kicked off the line, you guys hold it down right here. It's funny, man. It's, it's like we're in the gym running the weave, you know? We're, we're running drills right now across just, the country. I just want to clarify. He said we're running the weave with a V. Yes. Okay, because oh, yeah. we are out here in yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. <laughs> All right, well, Andrew... <laughs> Let's get into the series that's now tied up 2-2, two to two, and that is in the Western Conference. Speaking of Western Conference, a guy that used to play for the Lakers here, Trevor Ariza, was in the di uh, diamond shop earlier, getting his shine on, getting some tank tops for the summer. Uh, Andrew, what did you think about uh, o OKC's comeback? Well, I, you know, it's it was surprising to me in that I was just surprised that as good as San Antonio looked in the, in the first two games, they just didn't ha I understand game three. Game three was sort of, you know, it was do or die for, for Oklahoma City. If they didn't win that game and they went down 0-3, the series is going to be over. But in game four, it just seemed like Durant was playing at another level. It's a gear that I hadn't really seen him at this entire playoffs. When he's playing that good to me, he's better than LeBron. I'd rather I'd take him over any player in the NBA when he's playing Ooh. like he did in game four. Wow. I mean, th that's, that, he's playing at an extremely high level that, in that game. So... I was impressed by how well he played. I was impressed with how well Ibaka played. Ibaka had a great game as well. It just seemed like San Antonio never could really get it going enough to get to get. It seemed like if they could take a lead eventually in the, in the later part of the game, they might be able to get over the hump. But it just seemed like they were just chasing Oklahoma City the whole night. It just seemed like the mismatches that we've been looking for, all the mismatches that San Antonio had in their favor in the first two games, it just seemed like it didn't really matter as much in the fourth game, in the third and fourth game, because. OKC was just running a little bit more, and they were just so much quicker. What are you guys' thoughts? Well, definitely you could see that Durant was just hungry that game, and he was just not going to let everything that probably has been being written everywhere else about how the veterans are going to go through the their more Asian experience. And Durant is out there to prove a point. And I agree with you. I would definitely take Durant at that level of play over LeBron or Wade any day. Any day. The way he was playing, it's ridiculous. That's all around b-ball. Well, you guys have, you know, you'll have plenty more years if you took Durant right now over some of these other guys because the kid is still young. I mean, he's the veteran on this team now. He made the move from Seattle to Oklahoma City. He is the face of that franchise, no matter how much Russell Westbrook wants to be or thinks he is. When Kevin Durant goes off in the fourth quarter, Oklahoma City wins. I mean, it's bottom line. Bottom line. And the other thing is that the guys who I thought would be sort of offensive li uh, liabilities in this series – specifically Ibaka and Kendrick Perkins, they really brought it in game four. I mean, 26 points for Ibaka and 15 points for Kendrick Perkins. When you're getting those kinds of minutes out of your big guys, I mean, that's what they've kind of been missing, uh, in the, I think, in the first two games specifically. So it was nice to see those guys sort of come through for their team. You know, for, for San Antonio, it's it's hard to pinpoint what they're, why they lost those two games. Just as much as it's hard to pinpoint how they won the first two games, it's just they play such a good team ball, and when they're not moving the ball as well as they can in, you know, in game three and in four, they just couldn't get over the hump. It's definitely not a game that's indicative for them to give up 109 points. That's definitely not like a San Antonio team we've seen you know, throughout the past couple seasons. Definitely. A, oh, I guess we dropped them again. Luis, what do you think? I think a big factor is the electricity at home for Oklahoma City. Just the way they're uh, playing in that atmosphere. If you look at the fans, that's a big... A Big, big, huge advantage for all the crowd going wild. You see the different colored jer uh, shirts they're wearing in TV. It just brings energy for the young Oklahoma City team. And it just been rocking and rolling at home. So it's a big, big factor. So now, now, I just got I'm just wondering, as a San Antonio fan, are you worried now? Uh, no, I still got them in six. I mean, they'll come back home to San Antonio. We could take one there. Then I have to believe they go back to game six right, in, in Oklahoma. Yeah. And well, I think if they win big, in San Antonio for Game Five, I think they could take in Game Six. Now, as a Spurs fan yourself, what has happened to Manu Ginobili? I mean, 26 points in the first game, 20 in the next game, eight in Game Three, 13 last you know last night. He's really started to fade. Well, playing it, I guess he doesn't have the home advantage. You saw he was getting frustrated he last night. He shouldn't need the home advantage though. I, I mean, he, that guy's a veteran player. He's played in m many you know international games in different places all across the world. He shouldn't really need it. But it just seemed like he never. 
A, he didn't take a lot of shots. Only five shots in game three, seven in game, in game four. It just doesn't seem like he's getting enough touches. Uh, last night, you could tell he was getting frustrated. Very. Bu bumping into players. That's not um, Ginobili type player right there. I think he was just getting frustrated. I think he wanted the ball more, but they weren't passing him the ball. Another question I can't. I thought about was how come they barely brought in Jawan Blair late in the game last night? That's a good question too. You know, I, I've been wondering that myself because it seemed like Jawan Blair was such a big part of their offense, or at least their team during the regular season. And these last couple games, he's really stepped up his minutes. He's really been getting more playing time. It seems as if. Finally, I thought that if, if Blair had played more minutes in the beginning of game four, they might have won that game or at least pulled themselves within, you know, a grasping area, a grasping area of trying to get that game back. But I think that they are going to play him more minutes moving forward, as they should. Ten minutes Luis, just is not hey, enough. Andrew, Luis, yes. let me ask you guys a question. And, and specifically, Luis, do you think that the Spurs are now kind of showing their age, or do you think this is just the, the energy and the young legs of Oklahoma City? I think it's just the energy and the young legs right now in Oklahoma. Just like I said, just paying paying the toll right now. But uh, I think Coach Coach Pop is gonna make some adjustments for Game Five. Hopefully, he'll bring in Juwan Blair more and uh, put him more in the uh, big man position to take out on uh, Kendrick Perkins. Like I was just telling Andrew, I don't know why he hasn't been playing this whole series. He's a Oklahoma City Thunder killer, and to barely put him in the Game Four last night, late in the game, kind of questions what Pop is got going on. I don't think well, this has yeah. anything to do with uh, San Antonio being old. I think this just is Oklahoma City is a really good team. I mean, they, they are a really good team during the regular season, too. I mean, they had a great record during there. I know San Antonio had a better record, but Oklahoma City has two, you know, guys that are superstars in this league. And then when they have their big man playing as well as they are, they're going to be tough to beat. I mean, winning at home in the playoffs should be a given. To me, you know, I, I keep on saying like the old cliche, you know, a series doesn't start until the road team, uh, to the home team loses. And neither home team has lost so far. They've pretty much done what they're supposed to do. So I thought I thought that San Antonio would be taking more control of the series by now. I didn't think it would certainly be 2-2 at this point. But uh, that should have definitely a credit to Oklahoma City more than I think it is a knock on San Antonio. So are you guys going to stick to your original prediction of Spurs in six? Uh, I am. I know, I know most of the crew predicted Spurs in six, except maybe in Tito. five, except for me. I said Spurs in seven, and Tito said Thunder in seven. So yep, Thunder is everybody seven. sticking to their prediction? Yep, got Spurs winning game five and game six. Oh, yeah, I'm sticking to mine. OKC in seven. And I'm going to stick with mine, uh, the Spurs in six. Yeah, I think I'll stick. Uh... No, you know what? I'm going to change. I'm going to go Spurs <laughs> in seven. I'm gonna go Spurs in seven. I, I think I think OKC gets one more game. They're just too good. They are they're way too good of a team, and, uh, and they're gonna find a way to get one. But I don't think that Scotty Brooks eventually gets over on on Popovich. Hey, one guy that is gonna make sure that you don't get over by the H Town PD when you get pulled over is who? Gary Trichter. What's up, Rat Pack? I hear y'all in the building over there at Junction Bar. And no, you don't. No, you no. don't. Trust me. Was, was that you guys? That's us. <laughs> That's all four of us. Five awesome. of us. Well, shout everybody out. Who's there? Jay Nature's there. Shout out Soccer to Soccer. Ordinary uh, Fan Blog up here, rocking a Mexico jersey with the matching Cortez with the jersey. Oh, man. Yes, oh, man. Shout out to That was an interesting friend. game today, too. I, I really didn't expect to see that from Mexico against know. Brazil. Well, hey, uh, let's get back to this <laughs> Gary Trichter right here, Houston's top DWI lawyer. Got to tell you guys, if you're going to drink, have a non-drinking designated driver or take a cab or a limo or take Chum Lee's Black Phantom. But just make sure you get home safe and sound because both are going to cost a lot less than having to call my man Gary Trichter. And if you do decide to drink and then drive, do not have any open containers of alcohol in your car. Don't be riding around and getting it. Follow the traffic laws religiously and do not give the officer a reason to stop you because if you do get stopped, he's going to ask you all kinds of questions and... You better be continue to be polite because you could be on video and it could just spiral out out of control from there. And you're looking at a ten thousand dollar fine, and that's what a DWI can cost you. Plus, you're talking about your license being suspended. Save yourselves the headache, save yourselves the hangover, and call Gary Trichter at seven one three five two four one zero one zero. Once again, that's seven one three five two four one zero one zero. And all my lifers out here in LA, if you need to call Gary Trichter, hit him up, man. He'll jump on the next flight come out here and help you out if you got a case against you. Adam. For more information, visit TexasDWILaw.com. Adam. Yes. Uh, you missed her earlier, but I think we, you cut you off there earlier, but did you hear about Justin Blackman? I did. Yeah. I did, yeah. Gary, I was, that's a Gary uh, Trichter uh, client to be right there. 
Absolutely. We should hit him up on Twitter. Tell him to call Gary Trichter. All right, well, hey, uh, let's look ahead at this game tonight, Andrew. Uh, looks like LeBron's getting warmed up right now. we got a very special sneak of the week night tonight since we didn't have a show on Thursday due to the uh, international match that we'll hear about later on from soccer talker Luis as he gets into a soccer report. And, um, hey, Tito, whenever Luis gets on, let's turn that mic up because he sounded really excited tonight. I yeah, want I, everybody out here. There's a lot of soccer fans out here. I want them to hear what's going on. I, so I got him. I got him. We'll make sure, yeah, we'll make sure we get uh, soccer talker Luis nice and loud and clear uh, as the boys continue to file through here on Fairfax, 451 North Fairfax, Diamond Supply Co. We are out here on iHeartRadio, Sports Talk 790, and, of course, SportsRapLive.com. Uh, Andrew, your thoughts on this game tonight. Did Boston steal a game, or did Miami take the night off the other night as, as they got the first one in the garden? I think it was Boston. They came – listen, if, if you lose that game, you're going to basically go down 0-3 and the series is over. I mean, they came so close to winning game two. We, I mean, all of us in the Rat Pack kind of sat outside and watched the, uh, the end of game two after uh, Wednesday night. And that was just a, such a heartbreaking loss, mostly for Rondo, because Rondo played like 53 minutes. He played damn near every single minute that was available. And he had just an incredible game with the 44 points, the 10 assists. And to come up short in that game at the end of it was just heartbreaking for them. And I thought that if it hung over them into game three, the series was going to be over. So I think Boston sort of rallied the troops, realized, you know, what's at stake, realized that they're still there fighting and they still have a chance and they got one that they had to have. I thought that if Miami kind of won that game, my, that was a really a proving game for Miami to me because if they won that game, they would have shown, you know what, we're not here to mess around with Boston. We're here to snuff them out. And, you know, it's really tough to have those kind of games, especially when your opponent's going back at, back at home. You know, they're ready and ready to play uh, to win, you know, game three. So I think game four, it's going to be a real test to see if, because if this goes up 3-1 for Miami, it's going to be over for the series. I don't see... I don't see any way that Boston can win, what is that, three more out of the next four? That's just not going to happen against this Miami team. So this is a very big game. I think the biggest factor is probably the biggest factor of the entire series, and that's Rondo. You look at the amount of minutes he's played, 44, 53, 43. The guy's wow. just playing, playing a ton of minutes, and he's only had, I think, nine turnovers the entire series. So if Rondo can keep on bringing it and being the lifeblood of this, of this Boston Celtics team, I think they can take, take game four. Well, I talked about LeBron a minute ago, and I mentioned we didn't have our sneak of the week number 146 on Thursday night as we were at the Gumball 3000 finale at the Roosevelt Hotel. Um, but you know what? We've got a very special sneak of the week tonight, and our buddy Bobby is going to come by and bring them and have them on the table here. Oh, Tito, I never told you what I got from Flight Club. No, you didn't. No, it's a pair that you rock. You cop them to rock them, and you wear them well. And they fit right in on this table right here. We're teasing it. Wow. As they would say in yes, the radio we business. Are. We are. Other I kind of businesses we won't mention on air. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely shout out to young Corey. He has been holding it down all weekend for us, making sure that we were taken care of, and we appreciate him, man. Hey, he is not rude. He is as kind as they come. He will take care of you. His customer service is top notch. I'll tell you what, top notch. Come by 451 North Fairfax and check out young Corey, Yousef, and the rest of the lifers here, natives, as they say, the Fairfax natives. Uh, but, yeah, so our sneak of the week is going to have a LeBron theme, Andrew, and we're looking to see if he might block these at some point during the playoffs. I wonder oh. if Tito's got them on right now. I, I bet you I do. Oh, yeah, of course he's he been does. holding it down there under the table, <laughs> uh, I, I as am. they would say. Awesome. We got the camera going here on our table. We got the camera going there. You guys can check out all the podcasts at any time at sportsraplive.com. That's rap with two Ps. If you guys wondered who we were. And also have those photos up on our social networks now, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's Sports Rap Live with two Ps. You can check out Chum Lee's new Murdered Out Phantom, <laughs> oh my God. along with the lovely Miss Lonnie Lee, hard at work, in action, capturing the beautiful Brittany Weaver. I mean, what a treat that was yesterday to see that in action. For a late summer type of shirt, for sure. Oh, Adam, very patriotic. Adam. Yep. Uh, this this series, I want to get back to uh, some of yeah. the players involved. You know who I thought team. had one of the worst games uh, in Game 4? Who? Maybe of his entire playoff career. Shane Battier. He was terrible. Oh. Did you watch watch him in that game? He played 38 minutes, 0 points, 0 for 6 from the field, 0 4 from 3-point land. He didn't make or attempt any free throws, but 3 rebounds, 4 assists, and that's about it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, well, he, he gave three fouls. I mean, I guess he was good for three fouls, but 
Three <laughs> rebounds and four assists, and you wow. miss all six shots you take, and you play 38 minutes. What were you doing out there? <laughs> that's, that's what you were doing. Out there. I mean, he was working up a nice sweat, but what else was he doing out there? Oh, Tito, that was classic. He must have used all his efforts in game two when he nailed that uh, clutch three-point shot. Also, the behind-the-back pass while laying on the ground for the open break was pretty phenomenal, if you ask me. So, you know, Shane Battier, he, he can have a bad game every now and then. I, I want to see him, you know, win that ring, and I, and I hope they pull it off this year. Well, Andrew, that's the thing. You know, you, you think he's going to perform like he performed for so many years out of Duke into the NBA for the Rockets even when the Rockets had nothing Shane Battier was the one that carried that team to even mediocrity and another number 14 pick ultimately but you hate to see it because he's such a he's a guy I would want in my locker room he's a guy I'd want on my squad you know, Batty, he, he, he'll get it. He'll, he'll get it on the floor. And he also uh, kind of took under our wing our own Chandler uh, Parsons out there in uh, H-Town. Definitely. I want to say. Definitely. Uh, well, hey, guys, you know what? We're coming up on a break. We have so much to get into tonight. We're going to keep our eye on this game. We've got it on the projector right here at 451. Thanks to my man Yusuf holding it down right here. What you got, Kadoma? Man, I was going to ask you, uh, speaking of the Rockets, when Diddy rolled in the store, did you ask him about that dunk contest? No, I should oh, have. Wow. I wish he would roll back through now. We could ask him about it live on air. But, uh, yeah, man, and you never know who's going to walk in the store, and we're going to be here until 10 o'clock Eastern didn't, time. He didn't bring any Ciroc, did he? No, I wish he would come back with some. Wow. Hey, guys, you know what we're drinking here at 451 North Fairfax? What's that? Water. That's wow. what we're drinking too. That's what we're drinking here, especially after last night. I'm not having anything but water today. <laughs> you, you do know it is Yo-Yo Sunday. So. <laughs> yeah, Yo, you might as well bring your own bottle. <laughs> we, we brought ours. <laughs> for <laughs> sure, for sure. Well, uh, hey, we got some soccer to get into tonight. We got some baseball. Andrew, you got a good Martinez report tonight, I bet. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on with the Astros, with, with all the different moves the team is making, and the draft that's coming up tomorrow night. Awesome, man. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Well, uh, we got plenty of time to get into it all, so we're going to let it ride right here. And, uh, hey, any shout-outs, any early shout-outs you guys have over there? You uh, get well, in? I need to get this one out of the way, and that's unshout-out, whatever. The, we need to get a bad rap in right now for Rice. That's the third straight year in a row they've been bounced in the first round. Tw tw two of those at home. Can I shout out Dope Picks and Prairie View Nation? Nope, you cannot. I don't care about Prairie View Baseball at all. Now, well, they didn't hey. actually make it out. They, I, I'm not sure how far it went because I know that Sam Houston was still in it. I know Baylor got bounced today. Uh, no, not Baylor. Uh, a and got bounced today. I think Baylor got bounced earlier. Just a really, really foul year for, uh, for Texas baseball in general. You know, Texas Longhorns, they didn't even make the tournament. So just not a very good year for Texas baseball all the way around in the uh, college ranks. We better give uh, Augie Garrido Gary Tricker's number. They're not in the playoffs because that, that's what it's all about. It's all about championships. That man uh, is intense. Oh, yeah. And he's been he's been Gary Trickered before. Yes, he has. Yes, he has, unfortunately. But who hasn't? That's why he's out there. 713-524-1010. Give him a call. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's get to an early break right here and catch up. And then uh, we'll be right back here on Sports Rap Live. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sports Rap Live will be right back, back, back. <laughs> 